Amen. Today's gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 1 to the end. So listen to the gospel. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was passing in, pressing, on, pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished talk, speaking, he said to Simon, Crowd into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have come nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and they came and filled those boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a simple man. For he for he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We empty our hearts and minds to be filled by your love and the hope and the love and your word. And I pray the word on my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your eyes, Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. So, last Wednesday, I defended my dissertation and became Dr. Park or Peter Park with PhDs, meaning permanent had damage. <laughs> That's what it stands for. <laughs> or you can call me as like Pastor Dr. Peter Donald Park said, wow, that's so long. <laughs> My defense was, I will say, a heck of drama, which I explain later. So my family celebrated this milestone together last Wednesday, and then Thursday morning, I found that this Sunday's lectionary text is Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, and I thought to myself, are you kidding me? What a coincidence. And there is reason behind this, and this is why. Luke 5, 1 to 11 is the very text that motivate me to leave my motherland, South Korea, and to study in the United States. Mm -hmm. This bold, that bold step, crossing the Pacific and coming to the foreign land, wouldn't have been possible if God had not spoken to me through this story, the story of Peter, I mean, Simon Peter, on January 4th, 2004, the first Sunday of the new year. So when I was in college, I used to belong to the mission uh, fellowship called the Navigators. It is like CCC, Campus Crusader for Christ, or IDF, University Fellowship. It's something like that. So the navigators had a prayer meeting in Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at the time. And after that, I left there to attend a little talk <laughs> service at my church. But that day, I was great. I mean, very great. And the, and the meeting ended pretty, you know, pretty late because the leader of the prayer meeting gave, quote-unquote, 
brotherly exhortation or you know vernacular yelling at those who came away pretty much and me <laughs> when everything was said and done it was already too late to go to my church so I decided to attend a nearby church and guess what the pastor was preaching on this text because it was the first Sunday of the new year and the motto or a slogan for 2004 for that church was put out into the deep water and that story hit me hard the thing is I still don't remember what the preacher said, you know, specifically. But you know, that's what happens when you hear like sermon, right? You don't remember the content, but the feeling remains. Right? It was powerful. His message was powerful because as I was listening, you know, Peter's story became my story. I could, I could literally identify with him. So the story starts with Jesus standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, basically the Sea of Galilee, and teaching the large crowd of people gathered there. He sees two boats and fishermen washing their nets. He gets on the boat, the one that belongs to Simon Peter, and asks him to put out the boat away from the shore sits down and teaches the crowds. And after he finishes teaching, Jesus says to Peter, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And it is precisely that moment that hit me hard. So who is the fisherman here? Is Jesus or Peter? Who is the fisherman? It's Simon Peter, right? <clears throat> he is the man of the boat, right? <clears throat> Fishing was his profession. Furthermore, he and his companions worked all night and caught what? Nothing, right? They caught nothing. But here comes a carpenter or rabbi who seems to know the Torah, I mean the law, but has no idea about fishing. And this Jesus says to Peter, the fisherman, hey, let's go out there into the deep water and throw your net. It'll work. And wouldn't, wouldn't Peter, deep in his heart, you know, want to say, it's like, who are you? <laughs> who do you think you are? It's like, what do you know about fishing? You know, wouldn't his lifelong experience and knowledge about fishing say, Man, we've been there and done that. Nothing worked. But he says instead, Master, we have worked all night long but have come nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will net down the nets. So, there I was, on that very Sunday, I decided to study a book. Not simply because I had to decide as a senior in college whether to go to graduate school in Korea or in the United States upon my graduation, or because like, studying in the United, United States like, looked fancy, but because I realized, and I dare to say, I felt God inviting me to put out into the deep water. Because I felt there I would meet and experience God. Because I had no money and my English was full of Remember my story when I first, you know, arrived in Atlanta? You know, looking at, you know, what was my response to people speaking English to me? So I was looking at these people, 
smiling and nodding my head, right? I think this is precisely what is happening in Luke. So whatever we say, he said, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but for the things he doesn't like, he says, <laughs> it's either this or this. <laughs> Though Simon Peter's experience and knowledge told him otherwise, he obeyed anyway that night or that day. So did I that day. But our bold step of faith doesn't often bring favorable outcome, right? You, we do something with faith and the outcome Ah, not so good sometimes. Sometimes it's good, but open time is like, you know, it's not so favorable. And I would say it here, faith is taking a step forward, not with full assurance, but despite uncertainty and inability. For international students who wish to study abroad, in the country where English is the first language, they had to take mostly you know, TOEFL exam, T-O-E-F-L. It evaluates person's listening, reading, and writing ability in English, and it even evaluates speak, speaking ability, but not now, but was not the case back then. So I studied TOEFL and took the exam and again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> My dream score was 250. They have different score, you know, system. My dream score was like back then 250. The total was like 300. And my first exam, I got what? Guess what? My dream was 250, and I got 198, <laughs> I think. And by the end of 2014, the end of 2014, I took TOEFL exam five times, spending about $150 each time, not in total, each time. And the best score I got was 213, I think. Or something like that, somewhere there. But what could I do? You know, I already made up my mind. Moreover, it was too late. All the other options were closed. I couldn't apply to schools in Korea. The deadline was over. But I learned something from the experience, and you may have experience like this. Sometimes, listen up. Sometimes, no option is better option. Can I say that? Sometimes, no option is the better option. Because then, our faith kicks in. We really have to trust in God. The reason why Simon Peter obeyed Jesus on that day is that he really had no other option, right? And it was a blessing. He really had no other option, and it was a blessing for him. So he put out into the big water where his experience and knowledge say, no way. But Jesus says, only way. When we think there is no way, God opens a new way. So back to my defense, not my offense. It was intense. It took almost two hours, which I think now was like not a good thing. The shorter is always better when you defend your dissertation. I should have, you know, told my committee, it's like, yes, you're right, and you're always right. <laughs> That's the easy way, right? <laughs> but I tried to defend when everybody at the table says, otherwise, no. <laughs> At the end of my defense, my conclusion was it's major revision, and I have to, I have to enroll, pay another huge 
sum of money and do a, a major surgery on my dissertation. So I got called out, you go outside for us to decide. You know, we, I called out for my community members to decide and I was out there waiting and you know what? I felt like eternity. I was waiting. It's like, oh, I felt like forever. And I was thinking deep and sinking deep. <laughs> Then I called in, I got called in, and the committee said, what? Congratulations. Oh. Wow. Congratulations. Passed with minor revision. I was so surprised because I didn't expect that out there. When I was thinking and thinking, so I told them, I felt like I was descending to hell. <laughs> Looking back, at the end of 2004, 2004, in a worship service, I was crying. First, because I had no admission from a school in the United States, or had, and had no top or score I wanted. But finally, I realized something. You know what? I realized that I was out there in the deep water trusting in God. And I said, God, you know what? I'm here, out there. I throw myself into your hands and you are the only option I have. And you know where I, I ended up going. I went to Emily and later to graduate to Westbrook Union and I came to Grace. <laughs> And I finished my PhD. That's another all, it's a whole lot. It's like another story to tell. God calls us to put out into the deep water and let down your net for a catch. We have to do it sometimes because we have no option. And that's a blessing. The point of my story, my friends, is not you know how to get a PhD or how or how to you know, how not to pay tuition, but experiencing God's goodness, faithfulness, and trustworthiness. Once again, faith is taking a step forward, not with full assurance, but despite uncertainty and inability. Therefore, my friends, one chapter has ended and another chapter is waiting, not only for me, but also for everybody. I will embark on another journey to experience God here at, here at Grace. And you know, we are in the same boat. <laughs> we are in the same boat. And the man of the boat is not us, but who? It's Jesus. He is the man of the boat. He is calling us to put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And I don't know what the future holds, but I will throw my nets, even if that's against my knowledge and experience. Because he says so. So, my friends, would you join me in obeying and following him, which then let's go out there into the deep water where there is full of uncertainty, but full of faith, hope, and love.